NFL Week 2 is upon us, and I have a very big play that I'm going to be giving out for free in this video, only to the people watching this video. And stay tuned, because I'm going to sprinkle it in between this video. If you're not paying attention, then you might just miss it. Now, we're going to go over some of last week's games. I'm going to analyze those games. I'm going to give you some of my analysis for this week's game. And again, in between, I'm going to give you my biggest and best play for Sunday. I got my partner, Salim, here, an expert in fantasy, makes a lot of money in the fantasy side of things, and he's going to sprinkle in some tips, too. Salim, how you doing? Everything good, man. Excited. Excited for our first episode doing this and covering the whole sports world. Let's go over quickly three games for last week that I want to analyze and touch upon a couple points. The first one, Kansas City against Detroit Lions. An upset we saw. Salim, what would you think on that one? Kansas looked rough, man. They looked like they couldn't handle it. Nobody could catch the ball. It looked like it was Pat Mahomes just out there playing alone. Alone, dolo, but Kelsey might be back this weekend. Jones was in the booth just chilling because he hadn't gotten paid. He did get paid now, so he's back. Now, with Kelsey back, do they have enough pieces this upcoming week to go beat Jacksonville? Do they bounce back? The pressure's on them. They were expected to win game one. Now they're going to Jacksonville, a very up-and-coming team. What do you think on that, man? Do you think they're going to come in there and, and cover the spread of minus three and a half in Jacksonville? Or do you think we got another upset coming? Man, I don't know about upset, but I think the lineup plus three. I like it. I love the Jaguars. I love what they're doing with Calvin Ridley. It's number one target there right now. I think Kansas is in trouble this week again. I do like Jacksonville plus three and a half. You're giving me a field goal at home. Again, with a team that's trying to prove themselves. A team that's got a lot of new pieces. Everybody has a chip on their shoulder when they're playing Kansas and Patrick Mahomes too. I believe, depending on Kelsey, I think is a big piece. He's still questionable. Today is Thursday. We're recording this Thursday. So there might be some changes. As of now, he's questionable. And that's a big factor in that game. Now, if Kelsey does become available, I do believe that line is going to pump up to the four and a half, five range. I think Kelsey's worth a point and a half. And depending where the money's going. And I still find value in Jacksonville if Kelsey's playing. If you get him at plus four and a half, plus five, that's value. A home dog that's up and coming. You got Jacksonville. All the money's on Kansas. Everybody's expecting Kansas to bounce back. You guys know what to do when most of the crowd is one way. Nine times out of ten, the opposite works. So that's the first pick. First analysis. It's not my big play, but I do like Jacksonville this weekend. I'm big on them this year. Last week, there's a whole bunch of things going on saying that the Colts were going to cover. The sharp play was the Colts. Guess what happened? Jacksonville came out in the fourth quarter, third quarter, dominated. They won by ten. And I think it's going to happen again this week. I could see an upset coming. So stay tuned to that game. Let's stay really alert to Kelsey's injury to see what we're going to do. The next game I want to touch on for last week, the biggest surprise was Bengals-Browns. I called this one out. That line looked trappy. It looked sketchy. Opened up at plus two for Cleveland Browns. Joey B in that offense, that's stellar, right? Joey B just got paid. They got their full team coming back. They should be a championship contender team. Yet they got destroyed. Deshaun Watson didn't do much either. He played well, but I think it was that defense in that run game that held him really well. Now, my question is this, Salim. Is Joey B getting comfortable because he just got the biggest contract in the NFL quarterback-wise? Man, he, he didn't look good. But Joey B went out there. He got completely shut down, in my opinion. But credit to the Browns' defense. They came out, they had a game plan, and they did the game plan. So I'm excited, actually, to see what Joey B does this, this upcoming week with Jamar Chase. Let's see if they can bounce back. Just got big money, got paid. He owes something to the Bengals, so he better show out. And that's said a lot in any league, right? NBA, NFL, MLB. Once a player gets paid, they typically turn it down a little bit. And they get a little comfortable. I don't think Joey B's that type of person, personally. But we're going to see it this season to see if that's a fact or not. Now, I do expect them to bounce back. Honestly, they started the season like this last year. They started slow. They picked it up. Next thing you know, they went on a 9-2 run. And they got pretty far, right? They could have done better, but... A stellar team, stellar offense. I expect him to bounce back, but I also expect big things from the Browns. I think Deshaun Watson will pick up his groove throughout the season and maybe not go back to old Watson, but enough for them to win games because they have a great running game. They got Nick Chubb, man. Their defense is great. At home, they're great. They got a good fan base. I expect big things from Cleveland. As a matter of fact, last week, I did an analysis on five games. One of them was the Browns Bengals, and I had the Browns. I told everybody, hey, the Browns are the play here. If you're not taking the Browns, stay away from this game. I know it was a scary one. I know there's a lot of unknowns. Nobody wanted to take the Cleveland Browns. I get that because it's week one. But that game was either you take the Browns or you stay away. I called it, I nailed it, and now I think 
this week is gonna be a big one. I think they'll bounce back, we'll find out. Now the third game I wanna touch on, and a big reason why I wanna touch on is because I think this team is the most overrated team in the NFL, along with college football's team, Colorado. I think Colorado's another overhyped team that's not as good as people believe they are. And I'll explain one, why for Colorado. Colorado, they beat Nebraska this past weekend. The quarterback just had too many turnovers, Nebraska's. And that led Colorado's offense to stay out in the field majority of the time, tired out their defense, Nebraska's defense, and then in the third, fourth quarter, they blew them out. Now, where am I going with this? The Buffalo Bills are a very similar team. They got Josh Allen, they got Diggs, they got all these players coming back. They are expected to be big this year. They're expected to make the Super Bowl, if not win the Super Bowl. I think that's been the expectations for the Bills over the past couple of years, yet they haven't made it. But I don't think people realize how big of a piece Edmonds, their linebacker, was that he just went to the Bears. Last season, we saw it prime. He didn't start the season with the Bills. The Bills struggled defensively. Now, the argument here might be like, they didn't struggle against the Jets. Yeah, Jets had Zach Wilson, Rodgers got injured, yet they still beat the Bills. Josh Allen wasn't able to drive the ball and score the touchdowns like he usually is. He threw three interceptions. He was playing, honestly, like a degenerate. I feel like he was trying to chase the win and not play tactical football. I think, I don't know if you saw the coach was telling him, hey, don't be crazy, stay put. Yeah, actually, and even Stefan Diggs was telling him, you got to play smarter. I think it's going to be one of those, man, where the Bills right now this week, they're laying eight and a half points against the Raiders in Vegas. And this is another analysis I'll give you guys, because I think the Bills are going to be a very worthy team to fade this year. Big time. As a matter of fact, I like Vegas Raiders plus eight and a half, and I could see them pulling off the upset. Vegas Raiders, I know they got a new QB, I know they got a new system going on and all that, but they're a very solid team and they're a very up and coming team. Give the Raiders three to five years and they'll be a Super Bowl team. They're already in the contentions to make the playoffs, to win big, they're expected to win, but I think in the next three to five years, just every Vegas team is gonna continue growing. Vegas is a big city hub that is growing, man. LeBron's gonna have a team there eventually, MLB's going there, NFL's growing there, NHL's growing there, and I expect them to continue growing. What's your thoughts on the Raiders, bro? Man, I like the Raiders. Obviously, they have the wide receiver corp. Not sure about the QB. I'm just... <laughs> Garoppolo <laughs> isn't it, bad, man. I, I think he's a good system quarterback that, that most people overlook. It's just <laughs> see if they have the right system for him. I'll tell you guys one thing. If Garoppolo was in the Dolphins, would win the Super Bowl. But they, the Dolphins got Tua. And Tua's kind of just a shitty quarterback. That he's not a franchise quarterback. And that's my analysis on that. I don't think Tua's legit, guys. And you guys shouldn't either. He's a scrub. It's not a scrub, I'm just kidding. But he's not a, a great quarterback like my boy Herbert is, right? I think with that said, man, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna touch upon the game that I think is drawing a lot of attention this week. A lot of attention because the Dolphins now are expected to continue winning. They beat the Chargers in LA, which could have easily been considered a flop. Chargers could have won that game, in my opinion. Tyree Kill, 400 yards. Let's see what happens. They need to defend them better, but now they're going to New England, a divisional match, Sunday night game, primetime games, and they're laying a field goal favor for the Dolphins. My boy here is a Dolphins fan. What do you think about it? I like the Dolphins. I think they can pull it off. I do think it's going to be a close game, though, but I don't see the Dolphins losing just because I just want to clarify I am a Tua fan, even though my boy isn't. just want to clarify for the, all the Dolphins fans watching this. But definitely, I do think they're going to come out with the win. I have a lot of faith in Tua. I have a lot of faith in Tyreek Hill. I think McDaniels this year knows way better what he's doing. I think he made some questionable calls all of last <clears> year. <throat> so I'm excited to see. It's a good coach-on-coach -coach matchup as well. So let's see what they come out with. I don't think it's a good coach-on-coach -coach matchup at all. I think Bill Belichick shits on McDaniels all day, every day. I think that's a little off there, but hey man, we'll, we'll give that to you. So guys, I'm going to actually drop my big play here, and it's a big one. I'm running with New England Patriots plus three against the Dolphins. I expect New England to come back, bounce back from that atrocious beat. They could have covered, they could have won at the very end. We had them last week, as a matter of fact, full transparency. I had five analysis for that week. I lost one, went four and one. The one that I did take was the New England Patriots plus three and a half. And it was just weird plays at the end. They covered the spread and then they called holding for the two point conversion. At the very end, you saw how he threw the pass. By literal an inch, the guy was out. They would have won the game. I'm not mad about the analysis. I think it was week one. Mac Jones made a couple mistakes in the beginning that cost him the game. Philadelphia in the beginning scored 75% of the points. Yeah, I think that it just started terrible for the Patriots and then when they had to play from behind, they came back, but they just couldn't get it done at the end. And we saw the Patriots 
they're solid, man. Their defense is great. Bill Belichick is good at adjusting systems mid-game. I think Mac Jones is going to have a great season. They have a good offense. They run the ball well. Stevenson was actually sick last week. Yeah, he ran the ball pretty decent. I didn't think he was going to play. I'm big on the Patriots pulling this upset. And let me give you guys a few reasons why, right? Here was what I see in the Dolphins. Dolphins have two of their very system team, right? They, they rely big on the run, on slants, on RPO plays. Big time, right? But... One thing that I think all of you guys can attest, including you, is the moment Tua feels a little bit of pressure, he shits the bed. He cannot take pressure, and especially as the game goes on, he starts taking hits and he gets softer and softer. Now, we didn't see that too much last week. It was more, he did get hit a couple times, but he didn't shit the bed. Now, in New England and Bill Belichick going against him, Bill Belichick knows this more than anybody, that all they need to do is put pressure on this guy. And I think he's gonna make mistakes. I think, again, I'm not a believer in Tua. I'm not saying Mac Jones is that better, but I think when it comes to system, coaches, and all of the above, I think the Patriots have a better odds at covering the spread, if not winning this game outright. Home bounce back game. Dolphins just come off a big win. That probably shouldn't happen. They're on a high. Tua's gonna get set down, man. I'm telling you, Tua's not gonna play well. He's gonna throw a couple picks. You guys could probably bet that too. Patriots is my big play for this Sunday. Play the Patriots plus three. This background is Miami. I'm from Miami and I'm fading fucking Miami. Patriots plus three. What do you think? I think the Patriots cover, <laughs> but Miami comes up with a dub just because I'm a Miami boy. We're going to keep it like that. <laughs> As you guys at the end of the day, you guys are watching this video and continued watching this video for the big play. For the big play of AF Sports, Patriots Plus 3 will be cashing that ticket Sunday night, Monday we'll be celebrating, and then next Sunday I'll provide another one. So stay tuned for next week's episode as well. Tag your buddies, let them know we're doing this completely free. Most people are out there charging a bunch of fucking money for one day's worth of picks because it's NFL. I'm analyzing plays for you and I'm giving you guys my edge, what I'm seeing, and then I'm giving you guys one big play. And I'm not done. I want to touch, about, touch on one more game that I see a lot of value in, and I'm big on this team this year. I know there's a lot of unknowns, but my boy Baker and Tampa against Chicago, minus two and a half. I like Tampa, man. I think Tampa's gonna be a, a team that's gonna be, they're gonna be interesting to watch. I think Baker has a chip on his shoulder. We were talking about that earlier. They have a great defense. Um, they have low expectations just because of the whole uncertainty of the quarterback, but we saw what happened with Chicago last week. I think that was another surprise. I don't think anybody was expecting Green Bay to come out and whoop that ass. And now they're going to Tampa. I don't know. I do Tampa minus two and a half. I think Vegas is laying a trap for everybody to take Chicago. If they push it up to minus three for Tampa, that's a for sure sign you could take Tampa. Those are key numbers. In NFL, key numbers are three and seven. So if the line is laying at minus two and a half with majority of a public sitting at the other side, yeah, it pushes up to that three. For Vegas, they're laying a trap and they're letting you know that Vegas knows most of the others. That's why the bookies always win. That's why Vegas always wins. It's just a fact, right? I'm big on Tampa this weekend. I'm big on the Patriots. I like Las Vegas Raiders plus an eight and a half. I think that's a very fat line. And I do like Jacksonville plus three and a half. Now again, my big play is the Patriots plus three. I've given you guys four analysis. I'll probably go three and one, if not four and oh, I'd say. We'll find out. If I'm wrong, Monday, you guys could put it on the comments how much I suck, but I doubt that's gonna happen. What's your fantasy analysis, Salim? Everybody's uh, waiting and excited to hear what you got to tell us about fantasy because I don't so, know shit about fantasy. <laughs> it ties into what we were saying about the Jaguars, man. My player of the week, Calvin Ridley, man. I think that guy is going to eat. I think it's going to be a very offensive game on both ends, and I just think Calvin Ridley. Two tight ends set from the Colts, 49, off the fake to ETN. He had a very strong week one performance. Everybody was picking in this guy up in round three, and I wouldn't be surprised if this year he finishes top five wide receiver across the league. So excited to see that. That's definitely my pick. Go over the yards, whatever it is. I think he's going to have a huge day. He's so fast, man. He's so fast. He's so agile. And like at the same time, he's trying to prove himself too because of what happened last season. He got fucking suspended over gambling. Calvin, if you see this game, let me know. I'll give you some picks if you're still gambling. <laughs> If you're not, I understand why you're not gambling. But man, I'm, I like that. I do that especially because it coincides with the Jaguars plus three being the play. So really, is his pick. If it doesn't go over, the Instagram of his is below. So go <laughs> tell him how much he sucks if he doesn't hit, okay? <laughs> and I, I keep the same energy when the, the Patriots lose, but they do cover. 
<laughs> they, that's fine, but they do cover it. So that's fine. So guys, before letting you guys go, this will be an every Sunday thing. It'll get better and better. I'm gonna bring guests on soon. And you guys will see who. Some pretty big people get exciting. The whole point is to grow this show. And to give you guys free tips, fuck people charging over one day's worth of NFL picks, right? That's bullshit and a lot of people are charging a lot of money for that. So I wanna provide free value. In exchange, if you did find this valuable, if I do hit my place, because that's obviously the exchange, please share the show. And please comment and tag and like and subscribe and all of the above because that's the way I grow my channel, right? Not running any ads on this shit. I find it annoying when I'm watching a podcast or a YouTube video and I hear a freaking ad right in between when I'm trying to listen to the most important part. So I'm not doing that to you. So if you do find it valuable, you learned, you're winning, or anything that's valuable, please share it. That's all I ask for. Um, remember, Patriots Plus 3 is a play. I didn't say money line. Make sure to take Patriots Plus 3. I know there's gonna be that itch to take the, the underdog plus money. Just taking plus three is a safer play. A field goal at home is enough and you guys will win money out of that. And the other four, play them how you want. The main play is the Patriots, but I give you guys the analysis on all the others. Lastly, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more on how to win consistently in sports investing, how to grow your bankroll, how to make this an actual business where you're either A, making side income out of it or B, replacing your nine to five with it, I can help you. I have an inner circle with 14 guys where I teach them every week what I'm looking at, how I'm looking at it, my systems, everything from A to Z that I've grown and developed over the last seven years that will help you do the same. Now, there is a cost to it, but the cost is money, but you're saving time. What's more important to you, money or time? I think we can agree time. So if you do have assets, you do have money, and you're ready to take this to the next level, and you wanna save time and mistakes that I've made and most cappers make, and they lose money doing this, then go ahead and hit my line. My Instagram's below. You could also comment on this video, and I'll explain a little bit further, I'll reach out. And excited to continue doing this, man. Salim, thank you for coming on board, bro. I'll see you next week. I hope you guys liked it and share the show. Let's do it.